So let me start today by congratulating Dr. Sunita Tandalwarkar for becoming the Vice President for Foxy 2017. Hearty congratulations, ma'am. Also, Dr. Sunita is holding the Chief as a Chief of Ruby Hall IVF Center and Endoscopy at Pune. And uh, Doctor is also the Obstetrician and Gynecologist in the, the Department of uh, Obscaini at Ruby Hall Clinic. So today we would be discussing a bit about thin endometrium, ma'am. Uh, what are your views about like when do you call a thin endometrium as a condition in the women? Thin endometrium, it's a big word. See, usually when the lining is not sufficient as we expect, mm -hmm. no one in the world can say what lining will be sufficient. Because the pregnancies did happen when the lining was 5 mm or when even then it was a 14 mm. But on an average, when the lining is less than 7 mm, we call it as a thin endometrium. But more than the lining, we now measure the volume of the uterine cavity, the endometrial volume. And if that is sufficient, then that's okay. It's not only the endometrial lining, but the vascularity also. Okay. I may have a fantastic 8 mm, 7 mm, but the vascularity is sparse, okay. then that is also not a good lining. Mm -hmm. So the diameter or the measurements are not much, uh, you know, up to the mark for now. Yeah, but what happens, you know, in a routine practice, okay. just taking a measurement in 2D, okay. which is available with every ART consultant, okay. becomes more feasible. Yeah. So in routine practice, what we do is we measure from mm. anterior wall to posterior wall. Okay. And if that lining is 7 millimeter mm. and above, more perfectly between 7 to 9 millimeter, we call it, it's okay. Okay. The vascularity should be excellent mm -hmm. and when we say it is ready, it, the signal should reach even to the mid cavity. Of course. And uh, what are your opinion, like how should this endometrium be prepared for future? Mm -hmm. Routinely we prepare with the estrogens from okay. the day one of the cycle. We start okay. estrogen in a dose of 6 milligram to 8 milligram per day. Okay. It's continued. On 7th, 8th day, we just evaluate the with cavity with the sonography and okay. if the lining is fantastic, maybe I expect around 5 to 5.5 millimeter by day 7, 8. If it's going, we continue the same dose another 5-6 days and you call the patient. By that time, we expect the lining of 8 to 9 mm with excellent vascularity. Okay. Now, if on day 7 when I'm seeing for the first time and if I see the lining is thin, 2 mm, 3 mm, I may step up the dose. Mm -hmm. Instead of 8, uh, 8 mg or 6 mg per day, I can ste step up to even 16 mg okay. per day. Okay. And we call the patient again on day 5, day, after day 5, day 6. So it may be a 12, 13 day of the cycle. Okay. And that time, if the lining got prepared, it's wonderful. But usually, my experience is when you have a thin lining from beginning, mm -hmm. Even if you step up the dose, yeah. the lining remains little bit compromised. Okay. Okay. When the patient's BMI is higher, mm -hmm. while starting the dose only, mm -hmm. we start 4 mg 3 times a day, mm -hmm. maybe 12 mg per okay. day, there is no harm. Okay. So depending on the thickness, on the vascularity and everything, you know, the procedure that you apply over there, does it affect the output for the patient? Naturally. Uh, it is this lining is prepared for the embryo okay. implantation yeah. in a yeah, cases of true. frozen embryo transfer yeah. So if the lining is not mm. good mm. Whatever the excellent embryos you have it yeah. is not going to implant yeah, that's true. See the world till two decades ago we are mm. concentrating only on the embryos mm. Mm. The embryo has to be this quality which day of embryo which cell of the embryo okay. and which grade of the embryos how many okay. embryos mm. now we have equally mm. understood okay. that it's not alone the embryo mm. it is the endometrial embryo okay. dialogue between these two okay. and then the attention started giving equally mm. more mm. in our uh, this thing uh, setup what we do is if the lining is not sufficient mm. we call the patient on 12 day and we find okay. even it five millimeters okay. now basic thing is mm. what we do next mm. What the people do ma most of the time is they may add low molecular weight heparin, incosprene, yeah. so that the vascularity is improved. Of course. But most importantly, mm. the newer things, this mm. all you can read on in the yeah, yeah. Um, uh, journals or other things. Yeah. What we are doing in our setup is platelet-leach plasma. Mm. Mm. This is a very simple step mm. where 
we are taking the blood mm -hmm. we have now come to the conclusion at what centrifuge rate we no. should be doing okay. so that we get the best quality of platelet rich okay. plasma and we just do the installation of it okay. one or two sittings okay more than the thickness mm -hmm. i will say the vascularity increases fabulously okay we also so gcsf mm. i like gcsf mm. gcsf really has given a very good results okay only thing is you need to use it in the indicated cases mm -hmm. 5 mm not going mm -hmm. you will see the increase in the individual wall thickness mm -hmm. from 1 mm it has become like 3 3 mm yeah so it's good gcsf but you can also how mm -hmm. we put gcsf more or less the mm -hmm. same technique mm -hmm. with the iui cannula yeah. we can use the platelet rich plasma okay. we just put around 1 cc maybe more than uh, mm -hmm. more than 0.78 cc the cavity cannot mm -hmm. check mm -hmm. it gets spilled out Okay. but that's okay and platelet rich plasma we have mm. recently submitted our yeah. publication okay and it's giving us a promising results absolutely. so let's see absolutely that was a great message from you ma'am i mean the current trend has more been shifted towards the platelet rich plasma or using of gcsf in these conditions so what would be your final message to the gynecologists out there my message will be if the endometrial lining is not forming first evaluate the cavity please do the hysteroscopy to so see is there any problem go through the history of the patients mainly tuberculosis we cannot forget repeated curettage of the patients mm. and then next is if you are not getting try and see it in a cases of extensive adhesions where mm. we have done adhesiolysis we are also doing bone marrow derived stem cells okay. so that's all another interview we yeah. can take some yeah, other sure. times that's a totally different yeah. era mm. but thank you thank you so much for being with us and thank you so much for giving us uh, some clinical insights on this topic thank you